is by Simon Lynch. Simon, how are you doing? What's new in Australia today? I'm going well, mate. It's uh, it, it's summer, and uh, I can't be happier. The, the days are brighter and longer, and yeah, it's all good. Fantastic. And as always, we're joined by uh, Scotty John out in Utah. Scotty has robbed a picnic table, and that's what he's wearing today, the picnic table cloth. He's on mute. He can't respond. Scotty, thanks for joining us, as always. Uh, quick reminder, um, Scotty is monitoring the chat, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. That's what we're here for. We do have uh, topics that we will discuss today. Today's topic is going to be just around how to interview prep as a treasury practitioner as you start to get into the interview process. What we're going to cover is a lot of the common mistakes or areas of opportunity for people who are actively interviewing um, just to really put their best foot forward in the interview. This is going to be more from a job seeker perspective. We're going to cover this from very basic, um, a very basic level. We don't want to make any assumptions. Everyone has different experiences interviewing and uh, has a different amount of experience interviewing too. So jump in with any questions. Um, I did get a couple of questions texted me ahead of time. Thanks to you who have texted in. Um, as a reminder, you can do that weekly too. We're more than happy to cover anything that, uh, that you text me ahead of time. So with that, we'll jump right into that. Um, gentlemen, the text that I had received today, when interviewing a company, what questions are a good test for learning about a group's ability to operate as a team? Scotty, we'll, we'll kick it off with you. What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, thanks, Joe. So um, the I think we can get into a little bit more detail around some of these things, but I would start with the obvious, or perhaps not obvious, but but to actually ask the question explicitly, like how it's been written to us, I would I would ask the manager, um, you know, how they view uh, working as part of a team and, and leading a team. Um, that would be just the very first step. If it's important to you, ask it and, and gauge their answer. Um, I think you know there's there's a lot you can do beyond that, but uh, but I'll pause for a moment, um, send it over to Simon. I'm sure you've got some stuff to add uh, on, you know, and then we can, we can get into some detail here because there's there's plenty of ways to address this. I, I think the the best way, Scotty, is to ask them for some examples. Um, you know, how how is it like? Can you give me some examples of how you guys work as a team? Um, to me, that will cover it off because you can't just make stuff up. It's it's kind of the you know the situation task. Um, response type uh, answer that you're looking for there is to understand what it was, what was the project and how did they go about it? Yeah, so to that point, I mean, it's called it's called the STAR interviewing methodology, right? It's situation, task, action, response. Um, and from a recruiter standpoint, from a hiring manager standpoint, we're usually trained in this. The whole idea of it is to really try to draw out, get beyond the yes or no questions, take away from the transactional, get more into conversational and, and getting people explaining their experience. As a job seeker, you're going to have those questions. Those are the questions that you should be prepared for as, as you're entering this conversation. But at the same time, um, use that right, like flip it around and ask the recruiter or ask the hiring manager at the same time to ask for the, or uh, to list those types of examples and get them out of the transactional too. Uh, you know, it's, it's tremendously beneficial from a recruiting and from a hiring manager standpoint but it can be equally beneficial from a job seeker standpoint too. And it shows, it shows that you think a little bit more strategically and, and that you're willing to hold people's feet to the fire. Um, for me, you know, the, the other areas that you can touch on is just making sure that you understand the reporting structure, uh, you know, how, how the team and how mm -hmm. the division of labor are really split among the team. Um, you know, it's, you'll kind of get a feel for business continuity plans and, and how the team's cross-trained, but ask for examples around that. Ask if there is a business continuity, continuity plan in place, ask the, if there is cross-training. And Simon, to your point, ask for examples of, hey, what was the biggest challenge that your team tackled this past year? I, I, I personally think that the questions that you take into an interview tell more about you than, you know, the answers that you give. So being prepared with really good questions um, so that you can get insight. Because remember, even though you're being interviewed, it's just as much about you interviewing the company and the manager um, as to whether you want the job. So um, I, I really think the preparation around the questions that you want to ask to really get insight is uh, is the key for me. 
Yeah, and when you uh, uh, that kind of ties into what we've talked about previously, which is when you're when you're getting into your job search, really being strategic about it, understanding your decision making criteria and what you're looking for out of a job. Um, as you get into interviews, that criteria can be used to make sure that you're asking the questions to to get what you need out of making sure that that is the right move for you in your career. So it really starts with the prep and and even the prep that goes into your job search before you get into the interview. If you're thinking strategic in the inter or in the overall, you're going to carry that mindset into the interviewing. So Joe, you mentioned a word there at the end that I think is, is very critical in, it, in its mindset, right? Um, it's difficult, especially when you're unemployed. And, and so it's, it's far easier when you, when you have a job to put yourself in this mindset. But what you want to strive for is not about being chosen, for a given opportunity, but more about determining the fit. So to your point, you first, you've got to understand what's important to you. And then from there, it's about, okay, you know, this is, you know, I'm a gift to the company just as much as this is a gift to me, you know, the job itself being, being offered this job. So starting with that mindset and taking that into the entire process um, we can get into some specifics about how you can get there. Again, it's going to be a little bit easier just naturally if you already have a job because you, you feel like, okay, well, this is a choice that I can make. But um, there, there are you know, visualization exercises and other, other ways to do it as well if you, if you are you know, not working today. But I think really the key is just being aware of it. And from there, it's like, okay, now we're going to go into all the steps. Um, but given our theme is kind of around preparation – I think to your point, it's you've got to really, you've got to focus your research as it relates to what's important to you. And like you said, Simon, the questions that you come with, I mean, if you really just take a step back, you shift your mindset to, okay, you know, I'm, I'm determining whether or not this is a fit for me. You're going to find you'll, you'll have way more questions than you have time to even, you know, ask during the interview process. Yeah, and what we run into frequently is, and, and this has just been throughout the course of my career too, but it's been people wait until the offer's presented and then all of a sudden they have all of these questions. And a good recruiter is, is trying to flesh those questions out throughout the process and really saying, all right, well, did you get this answered? Is this still the right opportunity for you? A lot of people in their hiring processes don't offer job seekers that time. Your interview is that time to be able to do that. So it has to be that two-way street. You should be gathering enough information so that you already know by the time that offer comes in whether or not you want that job. And I think it just it does take that that planning and the more strategic mindset to really make sure that you're collecting information along the way instead of telling people what you think they want to hear to be chosen. So um, go ahead, Scotty. Yeah. So I was just, I was going to add on that note. You know the interviewer, it's really their responsibility to, you know, obviously to be on time. I say obviously, um, but it's not always the case. Um, and they should be the ones to set the expectation around time frame, right? Either they let you know they have a hard stop or they ideally will ask you if you have a hard stop. Again, that's going to be, they're, they're being respectful of your time. But if they don't, to your point, Joe, as the interviewee, as the person that's being interviewed, it's really up to you at that point to um, to, you know, to set some expectations, you know, make sure that you, you're going to have the time and, and as quickly as you can in the, in the process, just, or I should say in the meeting, just establish, you know, are there, is there going to be an opportunity today for me to ask you some questions? Cause I do have some. No, absolutely. And we're going to cover that with the, um, the, the hiring process overview that we had previewed last week, but um, from a job seeker perspective, yes, make sure that you have that time because we see it time and time again where you'll spend, if it's a half hour interview, maybe you get 25 minutes of having to explain your skills and experience and why you're the good fit for the job. And then maybe you're left with a couple of minutes to ask questions at the end. Make sure that you have those questions ready. If they're answered during the course of the interview and you find yourself um, find yourself kind of at a loss by the time they ask you if you have any questions, then reconfirm the answers so that you understand to say, hey, here's a question that I had. Here's what you told me. I just want to make sure that I understand that. It's There's nothing wrong with reconfirming. It doesn't mean that you don't, that you're not listening or anything like that. People will appreciate the fact that you were actually paying attention and taking notes. So um, I think that goes along with the interview prep too, is have something to, 
uh, take notes, whether it's your computer. Obviously, writing is probably going to be best, so it's not distracting with typing or anything like that. If you're on site, you're not going to have the ability to, uh, to use a computer to take notes anyway. But take notes along the way um, and make sure that you're covering the areas that you want to cover because they're definitely going to cover the areas they want to cover over the course of the interview too. The other thing yeah. I think that's really important um, is the people that you work with are, are really fundamental to you um, in your job. Um, making sure that you ask to meet as many of the team as possible um, during the interview process. You're obviously going to meet the manager and the manager is going to tell you, you know, what he wants to tell you or, or she. Um, but, you know, asking, can, you know, is it possible to meet other people in the team so that you can really get a better understanding of the team culture and the people? Because does, we can get you the best job in the world, but if the people that you work with are not, you know, not right for you, then you're not going to stay there very long. So I think, trying to ask or get to meet as many people as you can through the process is also quite important. Yeah, absolutely. Really put yourself out there because you want people to have a good feel for you coming in too. Uh, that's a two-way street. You want to have more, the more champions you have on the other side who are saying, yep, this is the person that we need to hire. Uh, it's only going to help you when it comes down to that hiring manager's decision. They're, if they're willing to include any of their direct reports or any of the key stakeholders that they deal with, make the best impression that you can on those people because the more champions, as I mentioned, that you have saying, yep, this is the person that I want to work with. And this is the person that we need to hire. Uh, that can, that can trump a lot of, uh, a lot of feelings that even the hiring, it either confirms or it can overcome a lot of the feelings that the, uh, the hiring manager is having. So guys, we're getting some questions from the community. So let me, yeah. let me pose this um, to the two of you. I've actually got a, a handful of really great questions from Christine. So we'll start with the first um, question she asks, and that is, if asking about business continuity plans, could someone seeking a treasury analyst position ask those questions or would those questions be more appropriate for someone who is interviewing for a treasurer role? I'll Simon. defer to my, my bald brother down under. What do you got, Simon? I, I think everyone can ask that question. There's no reason, like the level of your, um, of your role shouldn't dictate the questions that you ask. I think you know, it's just as important to you as a treasury analyst as it is to someone who's the treasurer. So my answer would be any question you have is a good question. So you need to ask that and, uh, and get the information that you need. Yeah, and it does take a little bit of, uh, you know, if you're an analyst asking that question, it does take a little bit of courage. You're probably in your own head and you're not used to thinking that way. But I mean, what it's going to be is all of a sudden you're looked at as someone who thinks strategically because you're talking business continuity plans. Most analysts they're only a couple of years into their career. They might not know what a business continuity plan is, but what this is going to do is it's going to give you some insight into the development opportunities that you'll have from a personal standpoint too. Um, if there is no business continuity plan in place, I'm hoping that when that hiring manager is asked that question, they're probably thinking in the back of their head, oh crap, I don't have that cross training in place. That's probably something I need to do. Um, if they do, they should be able to explain that to you. And that's going to be your career growth and your career path right there. I mean, I would ask it at any level. It doesn't matter what you're interviewing for. Just see how it is because you'll find out whether it's a siloed organization or more of a matrix environment or what you're actually walking into too. That's uh, it's going to give you some context clues. Awesome. Okay. Um, next question from Christine. Thank you for the great questions. Um, she says, how technical should questions be? Um, she says, I find that in interviews I've been in lately, no technical questions were asked from either side. And I feel like that was a detriment. Um, so curious guys, what, what do you recommend with regard to technical questions? Is this as in you asking the, the technical questions, Christine, or is that, I, I'll, I'll assume that it's uh, you being asked the questions, but I, look, it depends a little bit. Cause I think that um, I, I'm very firmly of the belief that you hire people based on soft skills. Um, the technical side of things in treasury can be learned. Um, and so for them not to ask technical questions doesn't phase me at all because they're probably just trying to get to know uh, the people and their softer skills. And that's what they're basing their hiring decisions on. So I, I don't have an issue with it, but there will definitely, there should probably be for certain roles, some technical questions if that's important, but if not, not potentially if it's not an important part of their hiring criteria. Yeah. And that goes into the preparation. I mean, looking at the job description, taking a look at the requirements and the, the actual activities day to day to find out what you might need to cover from a technical aspect or, or what questions are developing in your mind as you're reading through it. But to Simon's point, I mean, it's going to come down to interpersonal skills. We all know that treasury practitioners are business facing. You have to be strategic partners to the business. 
you have to be able to build relationships across that business, both in the treasury team and with stakeholders outside. So that's probably what's being evaluated and why you haven't run into the, the technical skills to kind of pair it what Simon said. But at the same time, be prepared to talk about the, uh, the technical piece. I mean, that's, that's something that practitioners are going to know. Um, if you know there's an area going into this that maybe you're a little light on, maybe you don't have exposure to capital markets, maybe you don't have exposure to FX, talk about your game plan. I like acknowledge it if the question's asked that, hey, I don't have that experience, but here's how I would go about learning. And here's exactly what I, the, the approach I would take to it. It shows that, hey, number one, you're self-aware. Number two, you have a plan and you're thinking strategically and you're, you're starting to picture yourself in that job and you already know what you're going to do once you're in place. So yeah, I, and, you know, I, I kind of sandbagged a little bit there, you guys. Simon, you asked a, a, a great question on you know, who's asking the technical questions. Is it the hiring managers or, or is it Christine? Um, the rest of Christine's question was that she's asked several technical questions as well, and she's received answers with, you know, the answer she's received is, I don't know. So Christine, I think we're, we'd all be curious to know the context here, whether you're, you're asking practitioners or if you're talking to a recruiter, because we can tell you right now, we are treasury experts uh, in terms of recruitment. We, we know this space, but if you ask me a technical question, I'm going to tell you, I don't know as well. So I, I would assume you're probably talking about the actual hiring manager, but perhaps, um, Give, give one of us a call uh, sometime later this week. We can get into the specifics. Great questions, though, and, and we do appreciate them. Yeah, and to that point, I mean, even a good recruiter is going to say, hey, that's a question you should definitely ask the hiring manager if you're asking a recruiter. If the hiring manager doesn't know, maybe that's a little bit of a red flag, but it all depends on the context of the question. Mm-hmm. We have anything else from the community? Not yet, no. All right. So we already... Uh, covered the job description piece, reading that ahead of time, making sure you're comfortable with it, knowing your strengths, knowing your, your potential areas of opportunity and having a game plan around those. Um, Simon, how about researching the company when you're, when you're looking at potential clients or, cause I know you haven't had to interview in quite some time, but when you're looking at potential clients, what, if you're sitting in the job secrecy, seat, what areas are you trying to research on that company? Just to get as much information as you can about what, I mean, from a treasury perspective, you want to understand what their treasury exposures are um, so that you know what, what's going to be important in the roles. You know, do they have a lot of debt? So is debt capital markets going to be important? Is it, is it more of a cash flow? So just I'm trying to understand more. I'm not a financial statements guy, but I'm sure a lot of our listeners are. So going to their financial statements to just know publicly, you know, what are their exposures and what does that mean from a treasury perspective? Um, and then just, just really getting a good understanding of what the company does. I think, you know, you don't have to be able to recite to the, uh, the person that's interviewing you exactly what they do, but you want to know enough about them that if they ask you questions, you've done some research and, and it shows that you've done some research. So that would probably be the, the key from my side. Yeah, it can be anything from mission to values and how they align with your own personal beliefs to... Uh, reading public disclosures, Scotty, I know that's a, a sweet spot for you or a soft spot for you, whichever way you want to go with that. But um, it, like, just read up, at least take a look. I, I can't tell you the number of people that I've encountered throughout the course of my career who don't know anything about the company by the time I'm talking to them. Um, turns you off a little bit from a hiring manager perspective from sitting in that seat where it's just like, okay, well, how serious is this person about it? Um, just at a surface level, you don't have to know the ins and outs of, you know, Q1 results from 2014 or anything like that, but at least be able to speak topically about what's going on on their website or recent news. Um, most companies, especially if they're publicly traded, they're going to have their press releases and everything out there. Make a note of those, uh, be willing, or at least ask questions about those. That's a, another perfect way to develop your three to five questions coming into an interview. Um, Scotty, is there anything I've, I've missed? Because I know you and I can go on about this for quite some time. Well, I think it's a good it's a good segue, um, you know, and to your point, I, I feel like you guys covered the highlights. Um, there's a bunch of, of things you can, you know, I tend to uh, probably overanalyze certain things and maybe, maybe um, you know, do too much research if, if that's, if there is such a thing. So I think you guys covered the highlights, but Again, it's a, it's a good segue to another question that we received from the community. So Adnan, appreciate the question. And hopefully we've kind of been addressing this already. Basically, Adnan was asking, you know, um, 
when you're asked at the end of an interview, what questions you have, what are the right questions to ask? And I think we've talked about this, you know, being prepared with your questions based on the research that you've done. If, if those questions aren't ones you've already addressed, one that, you know, at the very end of the interview that I think we should definitely bring up is, you know, what have we discussed today that you still have a question about with regard to my background? What question marks do you have? What can I address for you in terms of how I fit this role? Uh, make sure that the hiring manager doesn't walk away from that interview without you having asked that. You know, you could be as bold as to ask for, for feedback right then and there, but that'll put people on the spot. So the way to do that is to, again, address any questions that they didn't feel like they quite got the answer on. Um, because if, if they give you that opportunity, you might, you might clear up a, a, a miscommunication or clarify something for them um, that they missed throughout the interview because, I mean, you know, in some ways, you guys, we, we all know this, the interview process can be a little bit of a rehearsed thing. And our, you know, what we're talking about today is trying to differentiate yourself and break out of what everyone expects, right? So, um, Adnan, I think you need to have at least three to five questions prepared based on what Joe and Simon and I have already talked about your research. But uh, specifically at the very end, that is a question that you must ask. Yeah, so two fail-safe questions for the three to five. What is the next step in the interview process? And even if it's already been discussed, just then elongate that. All right, so after I speak with that person, what's the next step after that? Just making sure that you have that full understanding of the entire interview process. Part two to that, Scotty, just to piggyback off of what you said, um, the way I always phrase it and what's worked for me has been, uh, is there anything we've discussed today that really is giving you pause on wanting to advance me in that process? You're either going to get direct feedback or you're going to get a manager who's afraid to give direct feedback and you're dodging a bullet. So uh, either of you two have anything else to add on that? How about researching yeah. LinkedIn profiles of hiring managers ahead of time? Scotty, do you do any of that or have you done any of that? Do you advise any of that? Yeah. So, so again, Joe, getting into kind of like, um, like I was saying, I, I tend to go overboard on research, but I really think that you know, if you have to err one side or the other, it's better to err on the side of overdoing it. Um, not only would I recommend that you look up the, the person you're scheduled to meet with on LinkedIn, take a look at their background, where they come from, you know, what their area of expertise is, but also see if you can glean anything about them personally. Um, simply understanding where they come from will give you some more fuel in terms of, of questions to ask, and it'll show them that you did prepare um, to take that a step farther, I think look up, you know, every everybody in the team if you can. LinkedIn is a great tool, and not everyone is on LinkedIn, but these days most people are. So you can get a you can start to get a picture of you know what the team is, and then that's going to give you again more intelligent um, questions to ask around the reporting structure, who reports to whom, um, you know. So absolutely, I think if you can kind of create in your mind, what you assume might be the org chart based on LinkedIn research, uh, that's, a, that's again, that's just gonna add more um, opportunities for, for great questions to ask once you get into the interview. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, LinkedIn has on the profile, you can see all of their activities. So you can see what they've been commenting on, what they've shared, what they've liked. If you have a hiring manager who either doesn't have a LinkedIn profile or um, isn't active on LinkedIn. Obviously, that's kind of a dead end, but that can give you some tips and clues into how they interact with their community and their network and the type of person that they are. So make sure, like, sounds a little creepy. It's a little stalkerish, I guess you could say, but it's all public info. It's on LinkedIn. So why not take a look at it and start interacting with some of their stuff too? Um, you know, just at least it gives you a little bit of insight and insider info in that way. Um, the other thing that you want to do going into the prep, whoever's scheduling the interview, whether it's the hiring manager or a recruiter or whomever, just ask them, hey, what are we going to cover today? I, like, it, there's nothing wrong with that. It gives, like, everybody, uh, I think we're afraid to ask that question sometimes just because we think that interviewing, there's, there's a, a secret that needs to be unlocked or a secret key to this, and the other person doesn't want us to be successful. Ask the question, hey, what should I prepare for? How should I prepare for this? You guys have any thoughts on that? There's no, no there's never a silly question, Joe. That that's the, the the key thing you said there is anything that you don't know or you don't understand, you, you just need to make sure you you 
actually speak up and, and ask. I think that, uh, yeah, you, you ask the question, you get the answer, and then you, you can go away and make your own decision. Definitely. Indeed. And it, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, just it goes back to the, you know, this is oftentimes such a rehearsed um, activity, right? That, that we've, we've all been conditioned on how we need to act. And so a lot of us um, invariably will just try to answer the questions the way we think the hiring manager or the other person, the person on the other end of the interview process, what, what they want to hear. Um, and to your point, Joe, I think it differentiates you and it, it'll probably wake these folks that are on the other end of it um, up in terms of, okay, yeah, well, we don't have to just go through this rehearsal. Simon brought up a really good point um, kind of off camera, or I should say before we went live about the fact that, you know, you're nervous as an interviewee and, but you have to remember like the person interviewing, they're probably nervous too. They, they maybe hire one to two times per year. And this isn't a skill set people generally will practice. So um, you can, you, there's more you can do as the person being interviewed to kind of help yourself by putting them at ease. And like Simon mentioned, there's no silly question, but Joe, I love that suggestion to, to just, Hey, what are we, what are we going to cover today? Um, Cause it, it does, if nothing else, it will obviously gives you some really good insight, but if nothing else, it differentiates you. Nobody else is asking that question real quick guys. I know I'm talking a lot here, but we got another great question from the community. This one, I'm sure we could spend an entire, um, you know, additional live on, but uh, Melanie asks, when someone brings up salary, I've tried a few ways to avoid this question to later interview, but it still comes up. How do we answer this and not sell ourselves short? Simon? Look, I, I think that uh, it's going to come up at some point. So, um, you know, you, you're answering the question, like if they bring it up quite early, it's obviously something that's on their mind. Um, so I don't think dancing around it is probably the right thing to do. Um, but yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? If you don't want to answer that question. Um, I know in some states it's not allowed to be asked, right? So that you just got to be careful uh, how, it, how we go about that. But yeah, I think if they bring it up, it's obviously top of mind. So you're probably best to actually um, answer them fairly candidly. Yeah, and Scotty, this ties into what you were talking about earlier, opposed, like answering the actual question opposed to answering what you think they want to hear. Don't take a guess as to what this is. If, you're, if your floor, let's say, is 150, then your range is 150 to 200. That, that gives, like, depending on the level, I know we've, we have several conversations around salary and what the ranges should be within Treasury, what we recommend to clients and whatnot, but you got to be honest. I mean, at the end of the day, why tell someone that you're open to 95 if you know that you can't make 95 work? So just stick to what you know to be true. And that goes into part of the strategy of your, your job planning, or your, I'm sorry, your job search and your interviewing too, is be true to yourself. You know where your floor is. And if you don't know where your floor is, take that time and really make sure that you do before you get in front of someone so that all of a sudden you're not caught and rattled and you don't know how to answer the question. Right. I, I think just to add to that, you know, Melanie, when you mentioned that you've tried to avoid the question, I think I understand what you're, what you're probably doing here. You, you're, you don't want to be ruled out, especially probably early in the process if you're talking to a recruiter. Um, you don't want to be ruled out based on you know, giving the, quote, wrong answer. But I would argue that it's way better in terms of your time and their time if, you know, if they do decide, like, hey, you know what? We're actually not able to pay um, that amount. So like Joe said, you know, know your floor and give a range that's higher than your floor. If you want to, you know, if, if you want to ensure that that's not going to rule you out, you can add something like, you know, I am flexible depending on the overall package. And at the same time, I would argue that you should flip it back to them, turn it around and ask them what, what are they paying, right? Um, it doesn't mean that you should avoid answering the question, but it does mean that they owe you what their range is. So after you've given them yours, flip the question back, you know, is that aligned with your range? What is, what is the range you guys are offering for this job? Because at the end of the day, you know, yes, you don't want to sell yourself short, but a company that's going to try to nickel and dime, especially if you're in a situation where you're not currently employed, probably dodging a bullet, not a place you want to work. 
Yeah. I also think that the Go other ahead. the other thing in that um, is when you're flipping it to actually understand what I mean, it's a great chance to actually get more insight, right? So we're talking base salary here, but understanding what the short term incentive, the bonus, um, you know, what RSUs or long term incentives there are as well. So um, if they're going to ask you, use it as the great example, like a great time to actually get all the information that you want out of them. Yeah, and, and Scotty, you had brought it up perfectly. Everybody wants to be selected for the job, but you also don't want to be selected for the wrong job. So that's where I, I just keep coming back to, yes, flip it back to them. If you're dealing with a third-party recruiter, th this is probably a different rant for a different day. Most third-party recruiters won't give you a salary range. They just want to know what your salary range is. We, I mean, we're pretty transparent about what the clients can pay and that type of stuff. But you'll hear based on experience, you'll hear, oh, they don't have a salary range for that. That's all BS. In order to open the role, they have to have a salary range for it. If they're not willing to communicate and they're going to tell you based on experience, then flip it back around and say, well, what would you pay someone with my experience? And it, like, just try to get them to blink first. Most people shouldn't be difficult about this. I think it's just something where we overcomplicate it from a hiring process that it's like, look, just be transparent from both sides. It makes life so much easier the way that you go about it and the further that you get into these processes. You want to eliminate, as a recruiter, I know me, I'm trying to eliminate any surprises by the time an offer comes in. And that's one of the easiest things is just like, hey, this is what it can pay. Is this right for you? Yes or no? If it isn't, no harm, no foul. We'll move on to the next one. There's There are other opportunities out there. Like, quit treating it like it's the only opportunity on earth and and be a little bit more confident with your answers and, and uh, have a little bit more confidence with the, the answers that you're providing. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong too. And that ties into that mentality of, I want to be selected more so than doesn't matter what job it is. I just want to be selected. So, sorry. There was a, uh, like I said, it, I could take that on a rant in, in a million different directions, but I tried to reel myself in there. Do we have any? Oh, good. I mean, I think, you know, we all could, right. It's, it's, it's the reason at the end of the day, it's, it is the reason that we all work, right, is to get paid. And um, so I think, you know, Melanie, it, 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 hopefully we've given you the um, what you need to address this question in the future. But once again, it, it, when it comes right down to it, um, understand what you really need to make. And frankly, don't understand what you need to make to barely get by. Understand what you need to make as a comfortable living, that's your floor. Give a range above that. If they're if they are not able to pay that, again, you're 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 saving yourself and them a bunch of time. Yep. Cool. Do we have any other questions from the community? Not at this point. Nope. All right. Cool. Well, um, I think with that, that uh, that wraps us up. We'll be back again. Um, it'll be a practitioner interview next week. So uh, keep an eye out for our feeds as we introduce that in the coming week. Thanks, as always, for the questions. Um, you can catch this on YouTube. If you're not watching us on YouTube right now, it will be hosted on the Treasury Talent TV. Um, as always, keep the questions coming. If you have any suggestions for topics or anything like that, please let us know. We're here to provide value to you and answer your questions to make sure that you're, you're being educated and that you're successful in your job search and in hiring. So uh, with that, we'll let you guys go. Gentlemen, thanks as always for the insight and answers and we'll see you later.